Saturday View on Midlands 183. With thanks to Lum Plume Energy, pioneering innovation, powering progress. LumPlumeEnergy.com. Have your say. Call 0818 300 183. Text or WhatsApp your Saturday View to 083 3010 183. Hello and good morning, Saturday the 13th of April and it's time for you to have your Saturday view. I'm Ronan Berry of course and you're listening to Midlands 103 on this morning's show. A little bit later I'll be talking about turf and turf seems to be getting very, very scarce. Price seems to be going up because of that and any of my neighbours and friends that have mentioned it to me lately just have noticed that, that it seems to be going up and up and up. It seems to be getting harder to get your hands on peat briquettes or even firewood and sometimes even getting dry turf or dry firewood can be a challenge. The EU, of course, are again reprimanding the country for not uh, cutting out turf cutting entirely and not doing enough on it. But um, are we losing the point here? Like, are we missing the point that so many of you need turf or need similar fuels to heat your home? And particularly when it seems the winter seems to be going on forever this year. And again, that wet weather, is that going to also impact upon potential turf cutting as well. Well, Michael Morris, uh, uh, TD, will join me later on. He, of course, is involved in the Turf Cutters and Contractors Association. He is a contractor himself in that area. And uh, he'll bring us right up to speed with what latest legislation is and what the outlook looks like for the rest of the season. But for the majority of today's show, I'm going to go to that topic of road safety. And it's a topic that is not going to go away soon enough because our figures and statistics for this year are yet again absolutely abhorrent. I can start off by giving you one statistic that basically in 2023 there was a 19% increase in road deaths in this country and that the year before, bear in mind, was a record. 184 people died in 173 fatal collisions in 2023 compared to 155 deaths in 149 collisions in the previous year. We are, according to one headline in the paper recently, we are booking the trend when it comes to road fatalities and serious injuries. Ireland saw a 29% increase in road deaths in 2023, while most EU countries witnessed a decrease of 12%. Um, Very, very damning statistics. So, sorry, 19%, whereas most countries saw a decline of 12%. So quite a, a large difference in terms of the swing there. So this morning, and I want you to play your part in this as well. What's happening? Why is it happening? What needs to change? You know, do we need more enforcement? Is that the answer? Would more guards and more and more guardy on the road actually help change change people's behaviours? What do you think would play make a difference? One person has texted in already to say, can we try and find out why, um, when we talk about road safety, why most of the speed vans are within the 50 kilometre limits? Um, they, say they don't see why that is or what the point of it is. And I guess if we look at that aspect of it, it's down to the speed limit. If you lower the speed limit down to 30, if there was a collision, because bear in mind, pedestrian deaths are on the rise too. If there was a collision, it reduces the potential impact on it. But again, it's a good point. Why are the speed vans there? Do we need more um, fixed cameras that, that measure the speed on, on motorways? Or how do we go about influencing driver behaviour? Well, later this morning, you're going to hear from an orthopaedic consultant who will speak about not just the fatalities, but also serious injuries. Because bear in mind, the statistics show that I think on, on, on average... For every fatality we have on the road, in other incidents, there's at least 10 serious injuries too. And that, of course, has life-changing impact on those people and it can change their lives, could even affect your livelihood. It can affect your ability to function as a person, could completely change who you are, what you do. So we have to bear that into account as well because we often speak about the deaths only. We don't often look and acknowledge exactly what's happening. Why, why is it so high? What's trending? Are there any causes behind that? And you will know this week too, again, a lot of attention has been brought on the RSA and the lack of clear and concise statistics. And like I said to Aidan Barry there and, and just before this, we wear watches now. We have smart devices and technology that can tell us everything about ourselves, how we sleep, when our blood pressure is up, if our blood sugars are low, how far we walk today, how far we climbed, you know, they can prompt us to get up and move if we've been sedentary for quite a while. And that's just on ourselves. It's a, a lovely overview of and giving us a sense of our behaviour. You know, I, I don't track my sleeping or anything like that. But I know plenty of people have said I had a great sleep last night. I had two or three hours of whatever they call it, that uh, top class sleep that helps restore the body and the mind and stuff like that. 
surely we can do the same with private vehicles. We can have some system where we can look at our behaviours, monitor our behaviour, adjust our behaviour and think about others on the road. So we have a lot of stuff to get through today and we'll, we'll dig down into that. I'll have a local councillor who's calling for a road safety officer to be appointed in County Offaly. He claims that other counties have such a position, but Offaly doesn't. It's something he's going to raise at a council meeting next week. I want to find out more about what he hopes to achieve with that. And if there is no officer, why there's no officer at present, and indeed what officers would do in other counties are, are, are doing. But to begin this morning, we're going to take a look at what it's like to be a professional driver. Because if you have any familiarity with bus drivers truck drivers, van drivers. There's a huge amount of training they have to undertake. There's a huge amount of obligations on them in terms of to, or for them to keep their licensing. The majority of haulage companies now have software in their trucks that help track driver performance. They can see things maybe if a driver is showing signs of fatigue, if reaction times are slowing. Trucks have cameras on them now because, again, it's vital information that can be brought back if there is a, a, an incident or often what it is is maybe a, an allegation that you know somebody drove out in front of somebody. The cameras can show that. And those cameras are probably gathering really interesting data and stats around other drivers' behaviours too. So a lot of work goes into your driving licence. And if you're a professional driver, if you don't adhere to that and you don't keep the, all your trainings of up to date as well, you can u- lose your licence and therefore lose your livelihood. So to dig a bit deeper into the system, to see... Is it working? Is it fit for purpose? What impact does it have on driver, on driver behaviour, on the quality of, of, of the driver? Um, I'm delighted to be joined by Ger Highland from Rose and Alice. You probably know Ger, he's uh, from Highland Transport, but Ger, of course, is also the president of Irish Road Haulage Association. Very good morning, Ger. Morning, Ronan. Ger, take us through, I suppose most people might have an idea about having a professional licence, CPC courses, tachographs as well. What is, what's it like being a professional driver now, what sort of rigours are you put through in order to ensure that ultimately, I guess, you're a safer driver? Yeah, our, our, our drivers in the transport industry, I suppose there was never as many eyes on their performance as regards their driving, their rest times, what time to start at in the morning, what time to finish at in the evening. The Certificate of Professional Competence is a big part of that now, um, led by the RSA. But a big problem with the Certificate of Professional Confidence is that it hasn't been updated in the last 20 years. We're still, so we're sending drivers in one day every year to sit on a course that's of absolutely no relevance to today's commercial vehicles. Really? Yes. Um, Our drivers go in, they have to sit for a minimum seven or eight hours in a room listening to somebody talking about driving talking about vehicles and uh, has never held a commercial driving licence, in some cases don't even have a driving licence and they genuinely don't know what they're talking about. The the modern trucks of today all have EBS electronic braking systems, they have stability systems, they have lane departure, they have all of this. In the um, course that our drivers are doing, there's none of that discussed because there's no, there's no uh, relevance to it in the in the manual. When the CPC then was first brought in, it sounded like a, a very noble idea. Yes. Um, what's happened then that say somebody like yourself is, let's be honest, been very critical of it at this point? Well, I am I am very critical of it because it's a completely missed opportunity. Our drivers are going in on courses, myself included. On CPC courses, we do one a year, every five years, and then we go back and we start at the beginning again with the same manual that we had five years ago. No course change, no nothing. For example, our drivers are at the cold face when it comes to accidents, whether they're a fatal, whether a fatal accident, whether there's multiple injuries in an accident. Our drivers, in a lot of cases, are probably the first people or very close to it to arrive on the scene of these accidents. One of them CPC courses at this stage should be for a first responder. All, all truck drivers at this stage that's doing a CPC should be trained up what to do, how to do it in the event of an accident and 
how to maybe make people comfortable until the emergency services arrive at the scene. Our drivers coming on accidents and they're coming on them on a daily basis. We're talking about the fatalities here at the minute, but the fatalities is a very small end of the road traffic accidents and the life-changing injuries that people are enduring. Our drivers are coming on these accidents and when they go home that evening, they have to deal with what they've seen, what they've heard, and it's not easy out there. So I feel that one of these CPC courses should be uh, on first responders. I'll just give you an example. We installed, three years ago in our premises in Rosnaddis, where there's 40 people employed, we installed a defibrillator. There's not one of our truck drivers, myself included, that sat in on CPC courses were showed or told. There was never even a mention of a defibrillator. Defibrillators are nearly in all sports centres today. They're in a lot of villages and towns. And the amount of people who have been properly trained in the use of them is small. But coming off a CPC course, our drivers should be well capable of using a defibrillator, but it's not even part of the course. What are they being taught then at the present? They're being taught... I have a truck that came in this morning. It's 50 years old. They're being taught how to drive that, how told how to drive that truck because there is no course content on teaching them as regards load security, how to fit your new digital tachograph um, card in a tachograph. There's none of that. There's none of the new safety features that has come down the line in the last number of years. There's none of that being included. But then. Speaking, say, as a, as a private haulier, that's additional training and expense then that you obviously have to undertake because majority of companies, you know, if you're, if you're not compliant with the tachograph regulations, there's huge issues for both driver and the company. But even things like um, uh, load security, there's training bodies out there, the likes of the Freight Transport Association that will, will offer that. So is that an additional expense then or should all that ultimately be part of that CPC and again driven by the RSA, do you think? It should be all part of the CPC, driven by the RSA. But you see, here we are again. The RSA, I suppose, have been found out in the last week or the last couple of weeks. They're hiding behind GDP, GDPR where they, they're saying, oh, they can't give stats for this and they can't give stats for that. We have no problem getting stats from across Europe, but we can't get stats here from our own country. You so it's the- time that the RSA stood up and be counted. You mentioned like the truck you have outside. You first started driving again in 1983. Now, if anybody, if you could see, we'll try and post a picture later. It's It's been fully restored. It's an absolute beautiful piece of equipment. But in, in your own time from driving in 1983, right, clearly uh, people were probably moving slower, less movement on the roads, far less vehicles. But what have been the biggest changes you've seen? And, and particularly, say, in the last five years, have you noticed a, a marked change in driver behaviour have you been involved in more, say, near misses in the last couple of years than you were ever before? Like, What's it like being a driver on the road in 2024? It's, it's absolutely frightening. Every day you go out in a truck, you have so many near ones, you have so many uh, potential uh, points for, for accidents. We, as a company, made a decision 10 years ago to fit tracking devices on all our vehicles. We made a decision to fit cameras, front-facing cameras, side-facing cameras, and rear-facing cameras on our vehicles. We had to do it because of the amount of fictitious claims we were having from um, from maybe general public were saying that our truck collided with their car or tipped their car or whatever. And when we go in on the camera systems, 90% of what they're talking about has never happened. If somebody rings our office today complaining about one of our drivers, we can go in immediately and on the computer and download that, that driving. We can go back to five minutes or to 10 minutes, whatever, and we can say, yes, we were in, we were wrong, or yes, we were right. And I think it's time. We're, we're, all, we're all talking about fatalities and saving lives here I think it's time that there should be a camera system fitted in every car 
Now I see there is some young people when they pass their driving test and there's one particular insurance company here in Ireland insists that there's a black box fitted to their car which gives the insurance company sight on their driving um, their speed limits if you're in a 50k speed limit or whatever 100k speed limit and you go over the speed limit the insurance company can see it straight away and there is a threat there that the insurance company will remove the insurance from them or suspend it if that happens no other insurance company will be rushing to insure them I nearly think at this stage it's time that all drivers under 25 years of age should have a camera system mandatory in their cars and a black box that in the event of an accident it can it can be determined very, very quickly why this accident happened, how it happened and what their driving was like coming up to that. We're, we're talking about enforcement and the lack of enforcement. We can put as many enforcers as we like out there but are they ever going to be in the right place at the right time? I don't think so. But something like this that is can be monitored and managed, I think, would be a huge deterrent out there to the people who are speeding, especially on our country roads late at night. And a lot of people, you know, I think they need to be, be mindful that in a lot of commercial vans and trucks, there are there are systems that are linked to the GPS. So if the driver is exceeding the speed limit, that's automatically reported back, you know, and that that is helping driver behaviour to, you know, keep it in the speed limits. I know loads of drivers who do that and they find that they're on a country road. I'll give you an example. The road between Geishal and Cluny Gown, out by Raheen Church, mm-hmm. the speed limit drops to 80 and I know of commercial drivers who, when they're at 80, they know there's cars lining up behind them and people are getting frustrated and they're trying to get out around them over the hill at the church in Raheen and that's just one road in one instance and that's what's happening out there. So, like, this is at a commercial level. Lots of companies are going above and beyond to ensure that, I suppose, sometimes it it may be driven by trying to refute uh, illegitimate claims, but actually the the net benefit has been, you know, creating a space where the driver knows they're not expected to drive like a Formula One driver. They want to be, you know, safety is the primary concern on it. We talk about black boxes. That's happening in commercial. Your suggestion for all under 25s, why not every car? Well, Give, put the power back maybe in the individual's hands to to control our driving behaviour. And I think actually your point on the on the crash or whatever, the incident statistics, that could throw up huge information because there's probably spots on the roads where incidents are happening that nobody thinks because they're straight stretches or not necessarily always the bad bends or the tight bridges. It's it's probably random spots where maybe, you know, people are just getting that, that free run of things. So well, sorry, black boxes in every car. Is there a is there a is there a call for it or a well, I, I genuinely feel that if there's a black box fit to every vehicle, plus a camera system on every vehicle, it, it will definitely reduce fatalities and, and reduce the number of accidents on the road. We're moving in there now, we're moving to the edge of towns and we're reducing speed limits and so forth and so on. A 50 kilometre zone, a mile out from the edge of a small village, and you see it in a lot of cases, is only helping to frustrate drivers. Our drivers are driving for a living, so they can't afford penalty points, they can't afford to lose their licence. So they're they're sticking rigidly to the speed limits coming through these villages and towns. We've seen, and I can show you evidence of this on camera systems that we have in our trucks, where you have a driver driving along at 50k an hour, He's three or four hundred yards away from a roundabout. And the next thing, if you look in the camera down the driver's side of that lorry, there's a car or something up beside him trying to race him to the roundabout. And there's probably speed restrictions and that. We're, we're in a 50k zone. Our truck is doing the 50k that he's allowed. And you look on the mirror on the side of the lorry or look into the camera system and you have a vehicle up beside you trying to race you to the roundabout. And again, and again, so, and stories like that. If you told somebody that, they'd probably not believe you. But you'd have the evidence there to show that that that's what's happening. That type of behaviour. The camera evidence is there. And going back again to the systems that we have in our trucks, I can print you off a speed limit inf- or speed and infringement for every vehicle I have for a month. Yeah. 
So if I have an issue with a driver, I feel he's speeding or whatever, I can go in at the end of the month and I can I can go into the computer system and it'll, it'll spit me out data for every infringement he has done on speed for for the last month. And you're also obligated to meet the driver with that and go through that to show how they can further improve their performance on it. And that's, again, I'm, I'm just thinking to myself, like, even if that was an app that people got a, a monthly, like you get a, people get a, 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 a summary of their screen time on their phone if they want every day to show you what apps you were on. We can do the same with driver behavior. Jerry, I'm going to get you to stay with me because I need to go to a break, but a huge amount of text coming in on 083 30 10 103. I'll go through some of them now and some after the break. Um, Joe was texting and said, Morning, sir. Too many cars in the country. How many houses can you name that does that has at least two cars? And actually, Jerry, I think you said earlier, is it 170,000 extra cars on the road or something in the last five the, years or ten years? 170,000 extra cars on the road in the last few years and there's 400 less road policing officers in Ireland. Oh, there we go. And again, whether enforcement obviously needs to increase, whether it's the answer, but I think again, we're coming back. More people saying, somebody has texted in and, or Moll has texted in to ask, has a survey been done on what roads and what time most accidents occur? Is it main roads, motorways, rural roads, etc.? Well, I think some of this is some of that data that hasn't been released yet, but I know from the 2023 report that the RSA gave out, they, they spoke about in, an increase in... Um, pedestrian fatalities and a high number of fatalities taking place at night when there's less traffic on the road. What it doesn't go down into is the type of roads, um, the condition of the road, that type of thing. And maybe that is the data we need. And again, as Ger Highland has said, that is data that is easily collected if we had the right systems in place. Um, somebody else has texted in, just Jimmy in Port Arlington, says two things will help decrease deaths on our so-called roads. Local authorities need to build decent, safe roads. Most of them weren't fit for the 20th century, let alone the 21st one we were living in. They are a disgrace, most of them. Number two, prosecute the bloody morons that are texting and driving on our roads. It should be a €3,000 fine for the first offence and six months jail for the second. Jimmy, Jer Highland is nodding opposite me here and I tell you one thing, I absolutely agree with you on that. In the modern world as well, where you know, cars are equipped with Bluetooth systems, the amount of people in new shiny cars that you see with a mobile phone up their head, it is thing. It was something that was highlighted by Tullamore Rotary Club in a road safety uh, campaign launched there about a month ago in Skullwira in Tullamore. Phone down safe driving was the message there, the jingle sung by the children to try and get that message out. But as adults, do we actually listen? But Jimmy, I think you're, you're onto something there. Uh, lots of agreement here as well. Uh, somebody else has texted in they haven't said their name the RSA is a waste they are appointed by the government without any experience just another NGO jobs for the boys and girls mainly politicians who lost their seat we need strong road policing to be to be seen more drivers are using the phone especially around towns there we go again thank you for your text and you know, again highlighting the need um, for, for phones somebody has texted in the CPC is nothing but a money making machine for the RSA just the same as they are doing to taxi drivers taking their money and everything yeah, with the RSA is all about making money from time to, from the time you get your license to the time you start driving. They should be asked to show what they're doing with all the money they're, they, that they are making and they're not putting it back into our roads. Interesting point as well. Thank you for yourself. The majority of motorists don't use their indicators at junctions or roundabouts. Well, that's a whole other debate too. I think I'm definitely seeing more of that as well. And of course, the question is, if you're not using your indicators, are people maybe distracted by something else? Maybe those very mobile phones. Lots of getting in touch by WhatsApp as well. Um, I was coming home from work yesterday evening through Mount Melick. I stopped at the red light for the roadworks and an Arctic overtook me at the red light. OK, that's your own opinion as well. Um, Jared just told me RSA collected 93 million last year. So now, and there we are wondering about investment in our roads and road safety as well. Um, it's very, it's simple, really. If everyone drove on or within the speed limits, they would reduce harmful emissions, save fuel, less impact, less damage in an accident, less injuries and fatalities. That's Sean and Eden Derry. And again, Sean, good point. And remember, a speed limit is the upper limit. It doesn't mean that we have to drive at that limit as well. And that's often something that we um, that we uh, we get. Somebody else has texted in and asked, what about the state the farmers leave the roads in and never clean the roads after them? Where I live, it's a disgrace. And, and the way they leave the roads. And I'll be honest with you, the texter hasn't sent their name, but I, I've seen that. Um, and I know firsthand somebody very close to me who had a bad accident thankfully came out of it unscathed about 15 or 20 years ago and it was from muck on a road and it was at night time as well so yeah it's there's multiple multiple factors but mobile phones is coming up there as a common one um lots of people coming in I actually see more texts even suggesting about new cars with their 
with their actual entertainment or management systems that everything's on a screen now and I've heard this about electric cars that now to even go in and change the heating you have to or, or you have to go into a screen like a computer remember on other cars certainly like my car outside you put your hand down you just twisted the knob very simple you didn't even have to look you knew where it was very different thing if you go into a computer screen and have to start uh, searching for different options now I take a quick break after that Jared Hyland is going to stay with me but we're going to hear from a trauma surgeon just to get a, an idea exactly the impact that these road collisions are having on so many lives Saturday View on Midlands 183 with thanks to Lumcloon Energy pioneering innovation powering progress LumcloonEnergy.com uh, this morning on Saturday View, um, we're putting a particular focus on road safety, on the number, the rising number of deaths, the fact that in Ireland we're booking the trend that's been seen across Europe. Last year we recorded 19% more uh, fatalities on the road than the previous year. In majority of other European countries, the average thing was a 12% decrease. Loads of you have been texting and WhatsApping on 083 103. You can, of course, ring as well on 0818 300 103. And Nelly's on the end of the phone. And um, people are just really getting and, and we're getting some information on what is frustrating you and what you're seeing as predominant causes out there. Mobile phones and cars, people absolutely aghast at the amount of mobile phones um, that people are using while they're driving as well. People backing up Jer's thing there about trucks being passed out when they're slowing down to come to a roundabout, being passed out by other vehicles as well. Um, somebody has texted in and said, Jer Highland talks common sense. I find the HGV, HGV drivers much more courteous than young women who drive too fast and use their phones. The state of the road should be considered too. And um, some of the traffic calming measures are making making life very difficult for us lorries. Road surfaces are very poor. There are so many things wrong. That comes in from Paddy in Leash. And uh, the text lines are lighting up here. There's loads of you getting in place in touch. Somebody is texting to say, I, I emailed the RSA with a suggestion for a campaign to remind drivers who seem to have utterly forgotten about the use of their indicators after coming back to work after lockdown. I got a reply, but it was quite dismissive. That's Mark and Leash. Again, look, at fair play to you for trying to take action and do something as well. Yeah, somebody else is texting again. Modern cars are not user-friendly with the new computer screens. A total distraction. Again, hard to disagree with that comment. Um, I touched on that there before the break too. But when it comes to road fatalities, 61 in 2024 already. And if that continues out, you know, if you do the models like they used to say during COVID, that means this year would be a record year for fatalities on Irish roads. Again, young males are appearing high in the percentages of people who are being killed in our crashes. Pedestrians are on the increase, cyclists as well. What often goes maybe unseen or maybe isn't touched on as much is the amount of serious injuries that are happening and, and as a result of these crashes on our roads too. So to look a little, a little bit deeper and, and maybe get a sense of exactly what the scale of the problem is, I'm delighted to be joined by Professor Rowan Sheehan. He is a trauma and orthopaedic surgeon at the Midlands Regional Hospital, Tullamore. Um, Owen, I suppose to begin with that one, you know, it's been reported that in typically for every kind of road fatality, there's probably at least 10 serious injuries recorded. Does that stack up in your... Are you seeing that? Yeah, that'd be about right, yeah. Yeah. Obviously, in road traffic accidents, one of the first questions you'd ask a person that's involved is, is, was there any fatality in the accident? And the second one is, would they have to be extricated from the car? As in, would they have to be cut out from the car? And then the transit time from when they leave the accident to when they're brought in, the first responders, the paramedic services, the ambulance service would bring them in. Obviously, there's a thing called the golden hour, getting someone into hospital within the hour generally results in a better result for them. So I suppose from our perspective in, in orthopaedics, it probably is, obviously no one wants to be too busy with this type of trauma and, and certainly not fatalities. And we've had our fair share of them this year, as you can, as you've pointed out. But they can be quite horrific injuries. And we've set up a trauma network in Ireland uh, where there's two major trauma centres being developed, one in the Matter and one in Cork. And these, uh, the anticipation is that seriously injured patients will be ferried, transferred via the air ambulance, whether by the National Ambulance Air Ambulance or through the Air Corps Air Ambulance, um, to those centres rapidly within the hour, the golden hour, as they call it. And then there'll be another 11 major trauma units around the country to deal with the trauma that's coming in. So we're trying to plan and orchestrate the management of trauma and it's, it will be an awful lot better in the next year or two as that, 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 that sort of system evolves. And to borrow a, a, almost a cliche at this, at this stage, but prevention is always better than cure too. The types of injuries that people are 
emerging from accidents with. Is that getting worse or is there kind of a constant thing there that as if the number of crashes or incidents or fatalities rise, the number of these horrific or serious injuries rise as well? What, what Typically, what are you dealing with? Like Because well, ultimately, having life-changing <coughs> effects on people. Pedestrian injuries, well, the, the vast majority of people would injure themselves at home, ironically. They fall from uh, a standing height, which is... Um, would result in people breaking their hips, but generally road traffic accidents. A lot more pedestrians and cyclists would suffer appendage injuries or neck injuries, and drivers, because car safety has improved with all various airbags and with sort of restraint systems, safety belts, etc., and the, the, the different materials used to make cars. The, the the bulkhead of the car compresses and all that. So there is certain safety elements attached to it. People aren't. It's 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 it's. I suppose it's not something to be too excited about. But it, it in earnest. Whereas in the past you would potentially have been killed in a road traffic accident. Now people are surviving the road traffic accidents, but that's with significantly serious injuries. So they'll come in with fractured femurs, fractured long bones, fractured sternums. Um, the danger, the danger really for people, and and certainly if anyone attends the scene of a crime, obviously if someone is silent, if they can't breathe, if they can't speak, then there's something wrong with their airway. They could be in trouble, and obviously paralysis. You'd be worried about people breaking their neck and getting paralysed, and that's 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 significantly difficult for first responders and for anyone attending a scene to deal with, and that can be quite. Sometimes some of the scenes, particularly I think there was a bad scene down in Carlow. There was a road traffic accident in Carlow. And I was talking to a guard about it, and he told me that the sound of the collision was heard a kilometre away. Wow. So people attending these road traffic accidents are seeing literally decapitated people, etc. And it's, it's quite a horrific sight sometimes to when, when you attend one of these scenes. But the injuries can be horrific. They, you, you can only do your best to try and reconstruct people and put them back together again. You, have, you, you might have the courtesy of being living close to a hospital. You might be an hour, an hour and a half away. You could be in, you know, you could you could be on the side of a hill or the side of a mountain or anything like that when you when 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 you sustain trauma. So getting them in and getting them patched up is the main thing. But there's certainly huge problems rehabilitating and there's huge I mean if you think about it from a loss of earnings perspective, there's people are not back at work. They're out of work. They're having to find people to mind them. They're they're they may need cares, they may need to modify their homes. So there's a huge revenue loss as well to the, to both everyone, people and to the government as well because they're going to lose a lot of tax as a result of that, you know. Interesting. And we spoke to Gerald a lot about gathering data and actual data on where accidents are happening, ultimately mm-hmm. trying to find out why and how we can reduce those. Gerald also mentioned about commercial drivers often being the first person on the scene for a major accident and again having to deal with that trauma. But mm-hmm. you touch on something their own. Let's say if there's an accident, as you say, on up in the sleeve blooms and somebody, mm. emergency services are an hour away, it's going to take them. So that golden hour opportunity is missed on that. But if we know that, the speed limits should easily be maybe adjustable then. So from the data that we could have, and a lot of this is just geographical data, you could say that, well, you are now in a zone where you are two hours away from the nearest trauma hospital. Therefore, the speed limit in this area is 60 kilometres an hour. Would people buy that, do you think? Would we ever do that? Because we just stick up 100 kilometre an hour road signs all over the place. Well, I suppose what might slow them down if they know that they're now two hours away from a trauma unit. Mm. That might slow them down. Let them think about it. The phone thing is interesting, though. I know you've brought it up as well. There's a, you know, you, you, you're dealing with modern cars. Sometimes you've self-driving cars, and this has been mooted in the States with uh, Tesla um, so you don't. You wonder if it, you talk about earlier on about the black box. I mean, the cars are basically computers now. They're basically computers. There's the, there's infotainment systems there, and you look at a car, and just basically the entire front screen is just a big enter- entertainment system, basically, and that just leads to distracted driving, and that's the big issue, really. I think with cars, they all have GPS on them. They all can they can reverse into car parking spaces. They can drive. They can open the door. You can beckon the car. The car will come up and up up to you in the car park. There is no reason why there can't be a black box or a tracker put into cars, even if the manufacturers did it. And I'm sure the manufacturers have data on their cars because, quite honestly, there's SOS buttons in a lot of cars now, and there's automatic GPS positioning on them. If you're if you're if you're caught or if you're if you're God forbid you go over, you know, you involved in an accident where your car topples over and you're stuck and trapped in the car, you can press an SOS. So the manufacturers have installed all this technology yeah. in the cars anyway. So I can't imagine it'll be a huge leap. 
the insurance company probably need to be a little bit more involved as do the guards and the Department of Transport uh, in an effort to try and improve it. it it benefits everyone you know it ben- more guards obviously th- this it, we wouldn't need more guards if we had a better educated population to be quite honest and that could be done predominantly through the insurance companies and then as penalizing their premiums that's fair enough no claim losing losing part of your no claims bonus or something like that generally to get to 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 to, to punish people I, I prefer not to punish them but you'd rather educate people rather than punishing them but you know, punishment and fines is probably the best way to do it, to be honest, you know. Yeah. I think um, there's a certain percentage of the population would be more upset at being maybe blocked off Facebook or Instagram for 24 hours for saying something wrong than they would be for losing their licence. Uh, Owen and Jerry, I'm going to get you to stay with me as well because this topic, we're going to keep talking about this after a break. I need to go and take a quick break now in a second, but more of your text. I keep the speed limits, but when you see drivers in the rear mirror coming at speed and um, not keeping the limit, it's pure driver intimidation, lack of respect for the driver um, who keeps the speed limit. And again, on the phones, do the government or Gardaí really care? That came in from John and Athlone. Um, as you know, we know, the RSA is definitely coming under the spotlight lately on this. Somebody else texts in saying, Ronan, it's not just young drivers to blame. I know older drivers who never indicate and are on phones with no respect for other road users, indicating a big problem. Again, constant team around indicators here. Um, thanks for your text, Bernie. Um, in Borough but actually the stats are still shown though have, when it comes to fatalities young males are still ranking quite high unfortunately in that stats definitely not the only ones to blame um, Mary D has texted to say a max speed in every new car is so needed um, that's interesting if you look at reviews of cars and they can do 180 or 200 kilometres an hour wasn't there a motorbike stopped in leash I think last week the week before doing something like 240 kilometres an hour on a on a, an 80 road or something of course another person stopped in leash this week with a child in the back with no seatbelt nursing another small baby as well uh, one listener has texted and has asked Jer Highland why aren't all truck drivers tested for drink and drugs before they get behind the wheel and they're the biggest culprits for using mobile phones while driving Jared, do you want to respond? Well all I can say, say to you on that is the statistics that we have are not showing that our drivers are coming up as drug-related or drink-related. All the commercial vehicles today have, all the new commercial vehicles today have integrated phone systems in them. Any driver that I have has um, an earpiece that if he, if he does use a phone, he has an earpiece. So I'm not seeing that. I'm certainly certainly yeah. not seeing it. But what I would like to say before you go on a break, and maybe people might have, have an opinion on it, you talked earlier on there about the number of pedestrians being killed on our roads. And I have to say that it would be a huge help if pedestrians wore a high-vis jacket, if they wore a light on their arm at night, our, our members on country roads are night and at night are coming on people walking, all dressed in black. Well, and I'm going to say to you, Ger, I bet you the majority of those people have about five or six of those high vis vests in a box at home, or in a bag in the hall, or else they got rid of them to a charity shop or the bin because they're given out all the time. Many organisations, the RSA will supply any amount of them, but we're just again we're back to behaviour. People just don't wear them. You know, I will always have a couple of high vis best in the boot of the car for whatever reason if I'm going in on a site or if I'm going in somewhere to meet people occasionally you'll have to wear a high vis vest and I have pulled up with pedestrians on the side of the road and got out and given them high vis vests and the yeah. next time I see them there's no high vis vest again Yeah, that's I was it. in Dublin last week I was on the canal and I was I, I was coming down it was half five in the evening I was coming back heading on for the Nace Road I came to a set of traffic lights that turned red. When the traffic lights was due to change to turn green for pedestrians, there were six people on bicycles drove across the traffic mm-hmm. lights. I've seen it myself. Not actually, one yeah, of them yeah. had a high-vis vest yeah. and not one of them had a light on their bike. And we won't, we won't even mention the e-scooters yet. Uh, they seem to just do what they want as well. I'm going to have to take that break. Um, but we'll be, back, we'll be back in just a couple of moments. Before that, I have to respond to one text. Uh, somebody who was texting, he didn't say, didn't say who they were. So says, so Ronan, you are now a fully fledged member of the Farmer to Tester Club. Well, I absolutely refute that. I was reading out a listener's text and I know firsthand someone very close to me 
who had an accident because they skidded on about three inches of muck on a road on a dark winter's evening. So I know it does happen. I'm not blaming farmers. If you listen to last week's show and actually taking care of business during the week, you'd see it was putting a huge call out for farmers who were really suffering, farm business in particular, because of the wet weather. Uh, so much so that actually that a bit of action has happened for those very farmers. So um, I am not a farmer detester. Never was, never will be. Thanks for your text though. Saturday View on Midlands 183 with thanks to Lumclean Energy, pioneering innovation, powering progress. LumcleanEnergy.com focus this morning is road safety and what we can do as individuals to try to reduce the fatalities, reduce the serious injury and just reduce the number of incidents on our roads. In studio I have Ger Highland from Highland Transport and the President of the Road Hauliers Association and Owen Sheehan, a Professor of Orthopaedics and Trauma at Midland Regional Hospital in Tullamore. Some of your texts quite quickly um, Listening into that gentleman talking about black boxes, etc. A road is a back road and a shortcut from one motorway to another going different directions. Lots of bends in some areas. I was going to the town to have my hair done a few weeks ago and as I carefully navigated my bad bend, I met a huge covered on red large truck coming in my direction. It was way over quite line as well. Sorry, I'm not sure. Heard... I, I'm going to leave that one actually I'll come back to that in a few minutes as well somebody has texted in saying my dad was killed in a road accident in 1966 no speed involved and uh, just an accident I'm wondering is there any element of suicide in some cases I think the answer to that unfortunately is is yes that there, there are instances where that, that is a driver and again you know are we comfortable as people to have that conversation around well, would if that was your loved one and thank you for texting in if that was your loved one would you be would you be willing to have that information shared like as part of an inquest and logged because you know undoubtedly it, it, it probably is a factor as well somebody else has said a brand new Audi A4 and it's maiden journey hits a pothole on Dangan Road damaged front tyre which has to be replaced not good enough that comes in from Sean said not good enough from Offaly County Council uh, somebody is texting and said morning lads I'm a local authority worker and working on the roads in Offaly at the moment has come to the point where my colleagues and I take our own lives in our hands every morning the biggest offenders at the minute are both lorry drivers and young people yeah you can have all the stats in the world but until you watch it day by day you will then realise how bad it is out there now when we mention Offaly County Council independent councillor Sean O'Brien has most recently called for a permanent road safety officer to be appointed in a full time position to Offaly uh, good morning Sean um, is th- you, you, you maintain that Offaly is one of the few counties that doesn't have a full time road safety officer yeah, good morning, Ronan. Uh, I have the, uh, next Monday. I have the motion on the agenda for the county council meeting, uh, asking the county council to appoint a full-time dedicated road safety officer. Uh, most counties do have have that that position at present, uh, but we don't. Uh, and I think uh, you know, we've seen over the last few months the harrowing stories of so many accidents, so many people deceased. Uh, it's, we, we simply have to take action. And uh, I, I would see this officer as, as really being necessary. Uh, what it would do, it would bring, the, you could say, well, the engineer should be doing this or somebody else should be doing that. Uh, this person would have that function. They would coordinate, I think, within the council and outside the council because there are a lot of players in this. Uh, the Gardaí are involved, the people are involved, uh, their local communities involved. And very often the local communities know where the black spots are. They know where the dangers are. And uh, I think that they can be. So it's, it's, it's a team approach. And uh, I, I think uh, I'll be pushing strongly on Monday and hopefully my colleagues on the council will, will support me to have this person appointed. And it sounds like the beginning of what could often be a data gathering, as you said, maybe that local knowledge. And if we could then match that and back that up with actual data from the transport sector, from, from the cars and the vehicles that are driving as well. Sean, I'm sorry, time is really tight. So it's been such a, such a hot topic this morning. Thank you for that. I look forward to hearing how that goes on Monday. And undoubtedly, this is something we're going to follow up again on Saturday they view and that's councillor Sean O'Brien their independent councillor in Offaly County Council I have loads of texts coming in people if I sum some of them up people are calling for more penalties you know confiscation of licences reducing reneging or pulling pulling your insurance more idea, more stuff to kind of make people um, somebody says might be a controversial opinion but teach people how to drive um, look at Germany where they have roads where the limit is the top speed of the car I asked a German lad and think he said they could do 45 hours driving before the test and do with everything icy roads nighttime driving yeah that's interesting actually I mean we, we kind of shut the country down if there's a threat of frost sometimes and have we lost that ability to drive as well um, I'm getting thank you all for your text there is loads more to follow up on and I'm going to kind of take all these texts and log them because we'll follow up on this again I'm going to bring Jaron Owen back in just for a couple of minutes Owen during the break you mentioned how in your career Maybe over the last number of years, very, very few of the patients are actually commercial drivers. 
Very few, yeah. They're professional drivers, so I mean, you don't generally see, you know, commercial truck drivers, van drivers. Now, there's a lot of, I suppose there's a lot of traffic lately as well with the fact that people are buying a lot and there's a lot of couriers and a lot of the, the haulage business is busy and you're going to see an increase in traffic, obviously, with that. But by and large, the most significant injuries we see are from pedestrians, cyclists, and then drivers in cars. Obviously, the car is a bit more... You've got something around you. Motorcyclists, obviously, will injure themselves as well. If you're travelling at 240 kilometres an hour on a motorcycle and you hit a pothole, you'll be thrown about half a kilometre into a field or into a ditch or something. So motorcyclists are more prone. Dri- uh, truck drivers might be a little bit more cosseted because of the nature of the truck, but unfortunately enough, a lot of accidents that I've seen uh, trucks and, and the suicide thing is is, a, is is important obviously it would be on the off ramp of a, of, of, a, of a thing where someone would drive into a truck um, and that's sad but that can happen as well and, and to be honest I think I've only ever dealt with two truck drivers in 20 years yeah you know and I think it all fits back to that thing around training responsibility as well Jerry, I have about 10 seconds if you want to just say it and just to wrap it up there well just just quickly there about the the person going to the um, hairdressers. We've been calling for years with um, the RSA and the local county councils about hedge cutting, and especially at junctions where our trucks have to move out across the road or a car has to move out across the road because you can't get sight to see his driving. I'm going to say, I actually agree with you because just the other day on a road around here, I actually pulled back because I saw a truck coming and he had to swerve out because of branches. So yes. apologies, Jerry. Time up. Jerry Highland, Owen Sheehan, thank you so much. Topic we have to continue talking about. Lorraine's here after 11. With thanks to Lumclean Energy, pioneering innovation, powering progress. Lumcleanenergy.com. Midlands 103.